inflation under control, China's economy is suffering from the opposite, deflation. Consumer prices declined in July for the first time in more than two years. People and businesses are not spending, and the world's second largest economy is struggling to revive demand. Most developed countries saw a boom in consumer spending after pandemic restrictions ended. The huge increase in demand for goods that were limited in supply, coupled with rising energy costs after Russia's invasion of Ukraine, actually inflated prices, but that has not happened in China. There is increasing pressure now on Beijing to take a more active role in stimulating the economy. And let's talk about all of this now. We can speak to George Magnus, an associate at Oxford University's China Center and a senior economic advisor to UBS Investment Bank. Thank you very much for joining us today. First of all, can you explain what deflation actually is? Sure. Uh, I should add, actually, I was an advisor to UBS, but uh, haven't been for some years. Thank but anyway, um, deflation really is a sustained drop in the level of prices, much as inflation is a sustained increase in the level of prices. So to be fair, um, the kind of brouhaha about China today is the release of July's consumer price index, which showed a drop into negative territory. I think the annual change was minus 0.3%. Uh, Specifically, this is because this time last year, pork prices went up by about 26%. And they didn't this year. So the comparison is very favorable in a sense and shows uh, a lower reading of the consumer price level than was last year. But it's not the only indication that has been uh, prevalent of falling prices in China. And it's something which the authorities really need to watch very closely. Can you explain how it is that we saw inflation after the pandemic restrictions ended in many countries, including the UK, the US, but in China, we've seen the very opposite. Yeah, um, in fact, your package really kind of answered the question, really. Um, so for the United Kingdom and the United States, Western Europe and large parts of the world, um, I mean, not only were citizens and households given a lot of financial assistance during the pandemic, so they built up their bank deposits or their savings um, at during a time when they really weren't able to spend them that much, because they couldn't go to the shops, couldn't go on holiday and so on and so forth. So when we were all able to congregate again and mix freely and travel by train and bus and aeroplane and what have you, um, I mean, it did unleash this kind of revenge consumption really, which was to make up for lost ground. And of course, during the pandemic, um, lots of factories, lots of um, you know shipping lines and um, transportation, cargo um, shipments, and so on and so forth. Lots of things were shut down, or they weren't used, or uh, you know people were uh, furloughed or laid off or whatever. So there was this huge kind of demand and supply mismatch coming out of the pandemic, hmm. which pushed prices. And then, of course, the Ukraine war and energy prices on top. Now China hasn't really had any of that. Um, what the problem that China has is that demand in the economy is chronically weak. Um, okay. And that's the, that's why prices are, are so weak as well. So what does Beijing have at its disposal to remedy this problem? Well, that's the 64 trillion yuan question, really, because um, everybody expects the government is going to do something in the not too distant future because it keeps telling us it will. Um, they keep talking about the fact that they want to strengthen domestic demand and, quote, strengthen consumption. Um, but time after time, they fail to take the measures that actually will do that. Um, so uh, we are ex certainly expecting interest rates to come down. People are expecting uh, a relaxation of regulations in the housing industry, which is beleaguered and facing a, a long period of years ahead of shrinkage. Um, and there may well be some uh, further borrowing to finance infrastructure, for example. What we really want to see, though, is we want to see government measures to put income into people's pockets so that they can go out and consume. Um, OK. And that afraid is something that may not actually be seen. And quick final question. What impact does the deflation in China have on the global economy? Well, uh, obviously, there's a kind of a good news, bad news story here. The good news is that if uh, Chinese companies are cutting prices, then Chinese products sold abroad will be cheaper. Um, on the other hand, the reason they're cutting prices is because demand is so weak 
And that means that you can't really sell as much into the Chinese market as you might otherwise prefer to do. So it takes your money and pays your money and takes your choice. All right. Very interesting perspective there, George Magnus. Thank you so much for joining us on The Context. Thank you. Join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the TAO Media family. Please like and share TAO Media. We love you all. Please support TAO Media Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.